Hey everybody, welcome to Flight Test. I'm David, and one of the things that we like to show you guys is all the new innovations out on the market. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of those. It's the Macara Z1. So today, we're gonna to give you the breakdown on how easy this machine is to use, and also talk about all the cool things that we can do with this machine in the hobby. Make sure you guys stick around to the end, because we did something that we really don't recommend, but it's really cool. So Macara has made this very user-friendly. So for about the price of a decent 3D printer, you could be getting one of these guys, and basically, you'll be able to mill stuff from plastic to aluminum. Anything that you want to be able to mill, you can do on this machine. So now that I've kind of given you a little bit of a rundown on this thing, we're going to head over here to my computer and I'm going to show you how to get it set up. All right, so as you guys can see behind me here, I've got an FT coin that I designed in uh, CAD. We're going to start off real easy here and get this thing put into cam and sent over to the machine so we can get it cut out. I'm going to open up the Carvera cam software. Now that I've got this opened up, we're gonna start off real simple, like I said. We're gonna do a three axis building process. So I'm, I have a new project, start off with three axis. And the first thing that we wanna do is get our stock selected. We're gonna import our object. And one of the cool things that Marcara has done here is in this case, I'm using a step file, but they also accept STL files, which is kind of a different thing. Most cam processes don't use STL files. So if you have something on Thingiverse or you know, uh, Bamboo Lab or anything like that that you want to use, you can actually download it and put it in here and make something out of it that way. So as a lot of you guys know, we do a lot of 3D printing on this channel, and I bet a lot of you guys do too. This is a little bit different because we're going to be doing CNC milling in this case. Rather than adding material like 3D printing does, we're going to be taking material away. So we're going to start off with a rough pass, and then we're going to take it all the way down to a finishing pass to where this thing's going to turn out and look great. Now that we have that, we're gonna come over to our controller. We're going to click on upload file. We're gonna come over here and find our coin NC file. Select it and then upload. Now in this case, we're just making a coin to show you guys how this works, something pretty simple, but you can do some really neat stuff with this machine. A um, Couple of examples are a lot of like uh, landing gear parts that need to be structurally sound you might be able to make. Um, spinners, all kinds of really neat stuff. Okay, now that it's uploaded, we're gonna close this, and then we're going to find what we just uploaded, which is this guy right here, the Coin NC. Highlight it, select it, and that's gonna actually load it under our machine. Right, now, as you can see here, it shows all of our tool, tool paths and everything, and over here's what our G-code looks like, which is what, you know, the last process we did. It actually made all of those tool paths into a G-code, and then that G-code runs into the machine and tells the machine what to do. Now that we've got this window up, as you can see, we're starting off in the corner. I'm gonna take our stock, and I'm gonna go over and show you guys how to put it in the machine. All right, now we're over here at our machine. There's one thing that you do need to do so you don't mess up your bed, is just put some pieces of block down or something just underneath here. In case our bit travels too far, it doesn't hit our bed. It's gonna cut through here and cut into our sacrificial board. Now it's very important to make sure that this material doesn't move around. If it does, it's going to mess up everything. And you always want to be careful where you're putting your clamps to make sure that you're not going to run into them as you're cutting. And in this case, we're going to do auto leveling too. And it's going to check our whole surface to make sure that it's lined up good. Almost like you do in 3D printing with the bed leveling. So at this point, it went back to home. It's prompting me to remove the probe. So I'm going to basically just unlock it. Take the probe, put it back in its spot on the side here, and then we're going to take our first bit. We're going to put that back in our collet, make sure it's pushed all the way up against, and then lock it down. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to hit the play button, and it's going to cut out, and uh, we'll get back to you after it's done. All right, at this point, we're done with our first roughing pass. And I just need to change out this bit to the small one, and then it'll do a finishing pass, and then it'll pause one more time, and we have to do our final cut after that. All right, guys, so now the milling process is all done. I already went on ahead and cut these tabs out, so that way I could hurry up and show you this, and it looks phenomenal. I took it upon myself before we even started this to play around with the machine, kind of learn it a little bit on my own. 
and uh, I might have made an aluminum prop. So we're gonna head out to the field and give that a shot. All right, Josh, so we are out here at the flying field and um, I have to say the Marquera did a great job making this prop. It looks incredible. <laughs> I hope it works. Now, uh, I think we have an actual combat prop that won't break. Um, we'll see. I have a feeling it might bend under the right conditions, but I just did it mainly because it looked cool and I thought it would be kind of neat. Yeah. I don't recommend doing it at home. It's really hard to balance a prop and if you're not careful, you can make your plane vibrate apart. And not only that, this thing's kind of a, uh, you know, a spinning razor blade. So we want to be really careful. So we did it so you don't have to. But we're at the indoor event here at Kent State Fieldhouse. Uh, amazing people put this on multiple times through the year. And we use this as kind of our winter wonderland to be able to fly planes just like this. This has already been safety tested, spin balanced, all that stuff. Yes, yeah, um, we did all that stuff back at the shop. Yeah. And we put it on the new twig. Yes, yes. So the <laughs> tiny twig is going to maiden this up. We're going to fly it around. We don't know what kind of power we're going to get. But at the end of the day, if you cut out a prop, we've got to see it. Right, exactly. And uh, since I made it, I volunteered you to fly it. Deal. Let's do it. All right, so you're, did you copy a prop off of this? Did you like, download um, one? So I downloaded one and it was a little too thin. Yeah. You know, the aluminum was like paper thin. So I went in and just completely remade it in, you know, Fusion and kind of designed my own, I guess, the best right. way to put it. Well, now, unfortunately, it is a little bit shorter. We were only able, able to go five inch on this prop. So okay. it's it's a hair shorter than, you know, what we would normally have on this. and. Uh, oh. If it flies, it's cool. All right, you ready? Yep, good luck, buddy. All right, buddy. you ready, Noah? All right. I'm gonna make sure. <laughs> oh, jeez. <It's> up. <laughs> All right, so Dave is not only an amazing human, an amazing engineer, but he's an amazing prop designer, too. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far. Dude, it's it's in the air, though. It's fantastic. Look, where am I at throttle-wise? Oh, about half throttle, so under half throttle. That's no different than what, uh, what I was flying with earlier. Yeah, I did go a little uh, more aggressive on the pitch. I'm just hoping because uh, it wasn't quite as aerodynamic because I had to go fatter on it that it would uh I want to nom nom some airplanes, but I got to remind myself this isn't flight test. I just picture one of these things being on a combat plane or something just yes. completely blending up another airplane. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's doing great It's though. doing fantastic. Now I'm being hyper vigilant. We do, I mean, this is probably no more dangerous than a hard plastic or carbon fiber prop. Yeah. Something about metal blades on an airplane. It just seems intimidating, yeah. but yeah, really, there is no difference. It's it's fantastic. It has no wobble. It's great. Look at that. Hands I'm up. impressed. I and, love it. I mean, this isn't economical at all. I mean, the piece of aluminum I cut this out of <laughs> probably costs like you know eight bucks. Eight bucks. <laughs> and then how much milling time did he have on the machine? Um, probably about six hours in total. The Macara isn't the the fastest or best design out there as far as it goes for CNC milling, but the fact that it's a just a bench top thing well, you can set there on your desk yeah. and, and use it, yeah. and, and it's cheap. Think about this, how much would you spend to learn how to master this craft? You can do so in the comfort of your own home, and then you can build on that. Like it's a perfect way, kind of like an entry-level 3D printer. Yeah, and honestly, it costs about the same as what a decent 3D printer does now. That's, that's just awesome. Um, All right. It just got out of Kickstart. I believe they're uh, going to start selling them for right around $1,200, which really isn't too bad of a Not price. Not bad at all. But where I can see this just being amazing, all the people that make their homemade drones that have special camera mounts, things like that, this is going to be perfect for them. Yeah, I agree with you. We've got some pretty cool UAS projects. I can see this machine being perfect. So there's one off uh, fabrications too. All right, I'm going to bring it around here. Perfect. Great job, buddy. Thanks. All right, great yeah. job on the prop. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so friends, can you make a prop out of uh, aluminum? Yeah, definitely. And you can do it at home. All it takes is the Mercara Z1. Yeah, check right? it out. If you guys love building as much as we do and you want to be able to branch out on your skills, this is a fantastic way to do it. Yeah, it just got out of Kickstart, so make sure you guys check it out. It's called the Mercara Z1. And make sure you also check out our other Tiny Twig videos, like flying through 200 drones, flying FPV with Billy for the first time, and so much more, including this episode. If you want a Tiny Twig of your own, make sure you get an honor you guys take care. We'll see you next time.